when we graph a sequence like this guy, 1 over n, what we actually get is a collection of points. We do not get a solid line for the graph of a sequence like we would for the graph of, let's say, something like x squared. Uh, the reason for that is uh, for a function like f of x equals x squared, the x's are ranging over all real values. And there's, there's so many, and they're, they're what we call dense, meaning between any two real numbers, uh, there's going to be another real number between those two. And so there's no holes on this graph. It's just a solid black line where that's not the case for functions like sequences like 1 over n. For example, if we had 1 over n, if you plugged in 1, you'd get 1 over 1, which is 1. But you don't plug in 1.1 and 1.2 and 1.3. You don't plug in another um, x coordinate, or in this case n value, until you get to 2. Now, when you plug in 2, you get a half, right? But there's nothing drawn between 1 and a half. This is just empty space, right? Um, and then likewise, if this is 3, we get a third. And uh, if you plug in 4, you get a fourth, and so on and so forth. So if, if your sequence is relatively simple, you can graph these guys by hand because you take the ends, you take the integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you plug them in, you get y values, and you plot them. Right, but um, occasionally these guys will be uh, more complex. Maybe with trig functions, maybe with square roots, maybe with you know other types of things. Maybe you're trying to determine the convergence of a sequence, so you have to plot a lot of them uh, as they tend towards infinity. I mean, who who knows? Uh, but for whatever reason, you might have to graph a sequence that's a little beyond our capabilities of, of doing it by hand. Well, fortunately, there is a way to do this on your calculator, right, which is, which is great. It's very nice. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show you how we do that. All right, so, so let me show you here. Um, here's how we're going to graph these guys on our calculator. So if we pull up our, our calculator, I'm going to do this one on a TI-84. Um, you do not have to have a TI-84. Uh, uh, this is a, a one that's commonly used, but you can find a similar feature on whatever calculator you're using. Okay, so all right. So first of all, here we are at the home screen, and uh, if you were going to typically do a graph, you would go into y equals. Uh, this is where we've always graphed things. Now, what shows up when you push y equals is y equals, and then it wants you to tell it something, tell it something to graph. And then if you go to your variable button, right you push it and what shows up is an x not an n and the reason this is kind of the default mode is because we study functions so much in algebra class which is by far the most common uh, math course that students take they made this the default setting is function mode and so if you went ahead and you know graph something like x squared uh, off you go you get a parabola whatnot um, well there you go well this isn't what we want we don't want a continuous function we want a discrete function right we want it to have ends not x's so here's what you have to do here's the fix uh, if you look uh, on your keypad to the left of the arrows there's a button that says mode and you've probably haven't been you probably haven't been in here very much because there's not much of a reason to to be messing around with the modes on the calculator but if you scroll down uh fourth row at least on my calculator it's got f-u-n-c and that stands for function mode that's the mode that we're currently in function mode that's going to give you x's and y's so to speak um, there's another mode called parametric mode which we're not going to talk about there's another mode called polar mode which we're not going to talk about and then the last one is the one we're going to use seq seq sequence mode so if you change that if you push enter there's sequence mode then um, if we go back into y equals then you'll notice everything has changed the way that everything looks is is different it's not y equals anymore now it's a function of n you see u of n this is function of n. it's basically a sub n is, is basically all it is and so now you enter the function that um that you want like in our case we'd have one over n right and you use the same variable button uh, the one b below mode um, notice it says x t theta and n that's function mode parametric mode polar mode and sequence mode 
if your function is a sequence, you'd want ends, not x's. Now it also asks you for a n minimum. Uh, and as you well know, sequences can start anywhere. Most sequences start at one, but they can start at zero a lot of times. Uh, sometimes we want sequences to start at five or seven or something like that. So just tell it where you want it to start. In our case, we'll, we'll just start ours at one. Okay, and also go back to the window as well. Uh, your window is going to look a little different. You recall normally it, it says x min, x max, y min, y max, but now we have a minimum n value. Where do you want your sequence to start? n max, how many terms in the sequence do you want? And then if you scroll down, uh, you still have an x min, uh, an x max, and a y min, and a y max. And I went ahead and adjust these before adjusted these before the video started just to make the scale work out nicely but nevertheless when we go to graph it I uh, hope you can see this on my screen here you get one a half a third a fourth a fifth a sixth etc uh, this graph looks the same as the graph that we did by hand all right uh, now where might this um, be a little bit more helpful uh, well, how about a, a situation like this? Let's say your sequence was slightly more complicated, sine of n over n, um, and maybe we're trying to determine this guy's convergence. Well, I don't know the sine of 1. 1 is not on the unit circle as an angle. I don't know the sine of 2, the sine of 3, the sine of 4. Um, those aren't nice unit circle angles. I have no idea what those would be. Uh, so something like this, it would be very helpful to have a calculator to go in here, um, let's change our function to be uh, sine of n uh, over n, sine of n over n. Let me just check my mode real quick, make sure I'm in radian mode, I am. Okay, so we'll graph this. And sure enough, look look here, I hope you can see this, I know these dots are pretty small. Um, they go down and then above the x-axis and then below and, and so on and so forth. So it looks like this guy, the sequence is converging to zero, which in, in fact it is. Um, if you looked at a, a graph of this guy, um, my graph obviously isn't going to be as good as the calculators, but it basically looks like this. It, it looks like the sine curve that tapers off to zero. And, uh, and this makes perfectly good sense. As the n gets larger, sine of n over n gets smaller. It goes to zero. So uh, this idea of graphing with the calculator sequences can be um, very helpful you know, if you're trying to determine the convergence of a sequence you know, or something like that.